Hello there, brothers and sisters. It's really good to see you guys today. I am Melissa, and I am a grieving mother and a grieving daughter. And welcome to my channel. And I, today I was going to talk about um, teenagers and physical symptoms of grief for teens. And um, my last video, I was talking about the power and the influence that guilt can have in a teenager's life. And um, just like with all my other videos, you know, uh, the teen grief parallels a lot of the adult grief. You know, our symptoms are real similar, whether they're mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. And we still have two teenagers at home. And um, I know a lot of times they have physical symptoms that they just feel like I'm falling apart, you know? And um, our grief is really heavy, friends. It is. And for anyone who's new today on this, um, four and a half years ago, our Noah and Sophia um, were killed, you know? And um, at the hands of their oldest brother. And, um, my husband was stabbed in his neck and our family has really experienced something extremely traumatic very i mean you know extremely traumatic to the to the to the extreme we're ordinary people you know ordinary people that have suffered a traumatic death and loss and um so yeah the lord has just really led me to want to share our experience through these videos. So I pray that they encourage you in your grief um, and in your loss, you know. And in my last video, I was talking about as adults that we learn to deal with guilt in healthy ways in our own lives. Then we can are able to help the teenagers handle and release the guilt that they're experiencing. Um, so we are working on that. I. You know, I, I feel like as people and as humans that we just spend our whole lives working on these things together, growing in them, maturing in them. We think differently in a, even in a decade's time span. You know what I'm saying? Like when we're 20, we think a certain way, 30, think another way, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, so on, you know. So, you know, but loss not only affects teens emotionally, but physically as well and weird physical uh, sensations, you know, or, and troubling, there'll be troubling symptoms to these teenagers, you know, and they, it will, it's definitely makes their already challenging lives m even more difficult to navigate. Because if you just slow down and think about it, teenagers, their bodies physically already go through a lot of sensations, new ones, you know, and so they're already experiencing those, you know. So I'm going to just going to go ahead and start off with um, reading. I wrote down things from the grieving teen's heart, some thoughts that they're kind of thinking in their head um, during their times of loss. Um, one thought is, what's happening to me? Another thought, I have headaches. My stomach hurts. I'm tense and nervous, even when I'm relaxing. Oh, I can relate to that one. I've been sick a lot. I catch every little bug that comes my way. I actually can relate to that one too. <laughs> I really can, you know. I, another thought, I feel different. Like my body is betraying me. I'm falling apart piece by piece. And I'm tired, so tired. I'm exhausted all the time. The teen feels that way. You know, so I really try to remember that I'm not the only person walking around my house feeling exhausted all the time. Yeah. Another thought, I'm young. What's happening to me? These years are supposed to be full of fun and freedom. I'm not having fun and I'm not free. Frankly, I'm miserable. Another thought, no one knows this though, of course. I hide it well. My mask wearing skills have reached new heights. I can fool almost anyone these days. Yeah, those close to me look into my eyes and ask how I'm doing, hoping to see into my brain and get a glimpse of what's happening in there. 
They actually sense us doing that. Isn't that interesting? I smile and say, I'm good. Then quickly turn my head so they don't see the tears forming. Yeah. Another thought. I feel trapped inside. How long can I keep this up? Another thought. I wasn't like this before you died. I used to live. Now I go through the motions. I smile through the headaches and the stomach pains. I feel nauseated a lot. I don't like this and I don't have a clue what to do about it. Actually, I'm too busy to do anything but keep going. I can relate to that too. I must keep going. Smile, girl, and keep your head up. Or smile, girl, and keep your head down. Hmm. Smile. Oh, another thought. I wonder if I'm sick. I mean, ill. Like, I feel like crap. Like, I'm tired all the time. My head beats weird sometimes. I can't sleep at night. I can't stay awake at school. I think I'm losing weight. Nothing tastes good. Another thought, I trip over stuff. I stumble even when there's nothing in front of me. What's going on? Everything is upside down. It's just all wrong. My shoulders are in knots. My head and neck are stiff and tight. My chest is heavy. I can't get enough air sometimes. Another thought, is death this powerful? Is this all about losing you? What's the deal? Everyone seems fine. Everyone else is still doing life. Why can't I? I can't keep up anymore. I try to fake it, but it's not working. I'm limping along slowly. I feel stuck, trapped, and paralyzed. Yeah, I can relate to that one. I just want to sleep and sleep. I can't think straight. I'm so different from everyone else right now. No one gets it. I'm exhausted and alone. Loss has great physical impact, friends. It does. You know, loss not only hits the heart and the emotions, but the body as well. And so many people have a real difficult time understanding the correlation. And good luck finding the doctor who will actually believe you and understand too. Those seem extremely few and far between. You know, the shock and the roller coaster emotions, they just continually pound us friends and eventually they just begin to take their toll on us and on the teens. You know, we aren't super people and neither are the teenagers. You know, experiencing these new, troubling, dramatic physical symptoms is very common when we're grieving. It is, you know, they're new to us, they're troubling, they're even dramatic, you know. And many of us and many teenagers experience headaches, stomach distress, muscle tightness, heaviness in the chest, palpitations, chest pains. None of that stuff is unusual, friends. None of it is. Okay, I'm here to tell you, it's not unusual. Not unusual for adults and definitely not unusual for the teens either. You know, dizziness, you know, trem trembling. Those are other symptoms I've, I've seen, I've heard people talk about, you know, aches and pains, you know, along with all these troubling bodily sensations are common, right? Grief related physical symptoms. You guys, they just like appear, like uh, manifest themselves almost anywhere at any time. And the combination is usually very unique to that person. So, um, why we might have some similar symptoms, like we can say, oh yeah, I've had headaches too, or yes, I've had trouble grasping for air too, and yes, I have definitely difficulty sleeping, but they're, they are unique to us. We weren't experiencing them before grief. 
And so now all of a sudden, bam, here they are. And of, <laughs> uh, and of course they didn't all show up at once either. You know, so uh, grief is a form of stress. It is. And over time it begins to suppress our immune system like stress does, right? We're all familiar with that. So sometimes it's helpful for me to remember that grief is a form of stress, you know, and, and it has its toll on my teenager's immune systems and mine. And, and we do become more vulnerable to whatever illnesses or viruses, you know, that might be in the area. We do, we're not imagining these things, you know, and we do get sick more often in grief, you know, grief also affects our appetites and we can forget to eat and drink. Yeah, the teens do too. These are all the teens, you know, and they might lose weight. They slowly weaken and fatigue sets in and exhaustion quickly follows behind, right? So grief can very much impact the, our bodies and our physical health, even if you're young and resilient. It does, you know, and, and we have witnessed that and seen that in our own teens. You know, teen bodies are already in this massive change mode. Like I said earlier, they're growing, developing, maturing at a pretty phenomenal rate. <laughs> I swear, aren't they? It's like we close our eyes and they've changed. They're taller than us, you know, deep voices hair on their face, you know? So unless they've already touched personally by like a chronic illness already, you know what I mean? Or like other health issues, most teenagers see themselves as invincible and, in and indestructible. And they in inherently think of themselves as, in as immune to pain, don't they? And harmful physical distress. They just don't think of themselves as being able to, that they, you know, they're immune to it. Like, I, I don't have to, I can do it. I, I don't have to, you know? And then as grief takes over, <laughs> invades their lives when they weren't, they were the least expecting it, of course, that that toll on the healthy teenager, it really mounts over time, friends. It really does. And I have seen that in the four and a half years of our grieving with our teenagers. Over time, it is mounted upon them and it, and it and it's can be a mountain for them you know fatigue slowly builds and then minor illnesses pop up and like we have these seasons where they just don't never feel good or always with these runny noses or sore throats and body aches and headaches you know and of course they naturally wonder what the heck's happening to me of course they are but they're not really expressing it very much, though, are they? <laughs> yeah. And just like with my other videos, I want to remind you. You can make a difference. You can make a difference. I can make a difference in our teenagers' lives. You know, being aware of and respecting the impact that a loss can have on a teen's overall physical health. You know, losing Noah and Sophia, it was, it was like being smacked by a tsunami. Seriously, you know, and it just knocks us utterly senseless. And to expect to walk away from such a blow physically unaffected it is, that is just fucking unrealistic. So, yeah. And knowing, to, and secondly, to know that new, experiencing these new and unusual physical symptoms, they're disturbing for these teenagers, you know, and they're uncomfortable and maybe even alarming to them. And so their behavior is going to reflect that. You know, and pain and bodily distress, it raises, well, you know, it can raise teens' fears and concerns of a serious illness or even death. 
And then that's another rabbit hole they've gone down. And then they're thinking, oh my goodness, I might die. They naturally wonder what's happening, you know, and they can, some teenagers can identify so much with the departed person, the, the loved one that they love so much, they can experience some of those same symptoms. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if like a son whose dad died of a heart attack, they start, the son starts having chest pains or palpitations, right? Or a daughter whose mother had ovarian cancer, she begins to have abdominal distress. These are natural. These things do happen, right? Or a teenager whose friend died of a brain injury um, that they sustained in a car crash. That teenager starts having migraines. You know, our bodies, we are so connected to one another in so many ways, friends, so many ways, you know. So just please be aware that these symptoms, they may or may not ha have a purely physical root or explanation other than the grief. You know, like sometimes we'll go to the doctor and explain these symptoms to us and they run EKGs and they do, you know, x-rays and tests and blood tests and everything comes back normal normal nothing's wrong with the teen you know and how did you know we understand as adults how that makes us feel to be told oh all your test results are normal in the midst of of a of a dis, of physical distress you're just like i know i'm not imagining these things well can you just only imagine how much more so for the teen to have another adult say there's just nothing wrong with you but they know they're experiencing these physical symptoms they know it and I, as their mother, know it too, you know? So we just, when it's appropriate and helpful, we've just got to remind the teenagers how powerful grief can be physically. Yeah, it's very powerful, you know? And grief can take its toll on even the strongest of bodies. Yeah, you could probably be a, bodybuilder, <laughs> you know, an Olympian champion. We actually saw um, some examples of that in our last Olympics, um, the Beijing Olympics, with Michaela Schiffner, is that her name? You know, and she lost her dad a couple years ago in between the last Olympic cycle and this Olympic cycle. And she didn't do too good, did she? You know, she um, she made several mistakes that none of us have ever seen her make before in races that she gets gold in. And um, I immediately knew it was grief. I immediately knew it was grief, you know? That grief takes its toll on our bodies, even the strongest of bodies. Olympian champions are no, no exception either. You know, when we lose people we love so deeply, our bodies are grieving for these people. My body's grieving for Noah and Sophia and our teenagers, their bodies are grieving for their little brother and sister also. And my husband's body is grieving for the children. Our bodies grieve for them. And I'm sure other people who love Noah and Sophia deeply, their bodies grieve for them also. You know, so if, if the teenagers are willing, you know, let's try to ask them to talk about how they're feeling physically and, and, how, what, and how what they are feeling and experiencing might be connected to their loss and the grief that naturally occurs. Because also teenagers have so much going on too in their own lives, it may not be connected to the grief. You know, it might be connected more to their social life or to school or, or to other areas. So it's wise if we can speak with them and, and talk with them and if they're able to share with us, you know. But please understand, like I said earlier, it just, it just bears repeating. Please understand that these teenagers are not imagining these symptoms. They're not. And they are not, it's not simply all in their head. And what they are experiencing is real. It is, it's real. And they, they're not making it up. They're not making it up, okay? Last, fourthly, don't expect perfection of yourself or from the teen 
yeah, don't expect per perfection of yourself as the teenager's parent, as their teacher, as their pastor, who, aunt, uncle, grandparent, you know, just don't expect perfection on yourself. You will not get this perfect. Let me say that humbly right now. So let that expectation go. And I'm talking to myself, most importantly, Melissa, you will not get this perfect. So let that expectation go. But by God's grace, the help of his spirit, I can make a difference for my teens. You can make a difference for your teens. You know, my job is to love the teen as best as I can. Your job is the same thing too. Just love them as best as we can, you know, and using the resources and the wisdom that we have, right? And make the best decision possible at the time. And sometimes it might be the wrong decision, you know? And then that's when I got to go back to my teen and say, I'm sorry. I made the wrong decision. I said the wrong thing. You know, don't neglect or ignore those the, the, the symptoms. Do not do that as a parent in their life. That is probably the worst thing we can do is to ignore it or neglect it. You know, but do keep in mind that they that it might be a result of grief related stress. Just kind of keep that in mind too. It doesn't matter how many years and months start to go by, just don't forget that because most likely it hasn't for you, you know, it hasn't for me. So we must keep in mind that I'm not simply helping my teens adjust to this awful, 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 horrible, unnatural loss, you know, but I'm also investing in them too and their future, right? Also training them for down the road, right? Like that was always the goal before grief. That's always our goal as parents, right? To raise teens that can be adjusted adults and function, right? And so unresolved grief can affect us physically, burdens from the past, and grief can produce physical symptoms. So, you know, definitely nutrition can play a role. You know, we gotta put good stuff in, eat well, you know, and of course, <laughs> oh, most teenagers are not naturally geared toward this, right? They'd rather eat microwave foods and fast foods and oven foods. So we just got to do what we can to encourage healthy foods, right? And, you know, yeah, I definitely carry some guilt about not cooking often. I try to cook more. I try to be more conscious of that. And some weeks I'm successful at that and other weeks not at all. Yeah. So... And then I'm just honest with my teens and say, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not cooking today. You know, not, and it, we're, we all kind of get it. <laughs> God bless those two. They've got gracious hearts. They seem to get it. Hydration, obviously, you know, we often forget how critically important, you know, getting enough fluids is and, and especially enough electrolytes. So, you know, we forget that naturally, we do. And so grief stress can throw the body out of its normal, um, rhythm and all that good stuff. So supplementing with the right fluids can go a long way in supporting these grieving teenagers' hearts. I'm telling you, sometimes I notice it's a difference in what I'm able to handle in a day if I get enough water, right? So like we, we tend, we do keep bottled water regularly in our refrigerator. So that's helpful, you know, so they can open the fridge and grab a water, you know? always and we did that before grief so that was easy to obviously continue that but it's helpful if it can be readily available I'm sure too you know and obviously exercise that's like my least favorite one I hate that one <laughs> but you know moderate to even strenuous exercise can relieve a great deal of anxiety right it it releases endorphins which the teenagers desperately needs while grieving so Physical training brings a sense of well-being and peace to both the body and mind. You know, and I have experienced that when I get exercise regularly, when I get outside and I get the sun on my face and my body and, and moving more, you know, it, it, it feels more tolerable to handle life. You know, just don't underestimate the power of this. Just a simple, decent meal and some water can do for a teenager and yourself. So yes, grief affects the teenager's body physically. 
It does, friends. It does. Well, I better end here because I've just talked a little bit too long today. Thank you for hanging with me till the end, friends. And God bless you and be well today. And I will see you on my next video.